Hey, hey, Felipe, how are you? Good, how are you, man? <coughs> you doing well? Yes, I can see you clearly. Look great. Cool. Nice. Uh, happy Friday. Thank you for joining. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. My camera's right, my, my camera's right here, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, it's not, facing, it's not facing the other end. You're good. Oh, looking right here. <laughs> what's up, boo? Oh, what's up? What's up? I'm where are you from? What, what you got back to albums? Those are my sound panels. It's my attempt okay. to look like I'm a professional podcaster, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know who Joe Diaz is, right? Yes. He had the egg egg crates on the side of the wall, but I don't think they helped much. It was full of smoke. Oh yeah, that's what I used to have before I got my first patron on my Patreon page, and now yeah. I'm able to upgrade with the sound panels. So we're getting there slowly but nice. surely. They help, right? They do, yeah. Because I'm a pretty. Don't, don't they help the sound from bouncing over and over? They do exactly. They do, and I'm a loud guy. I've got this other side with panels right in front of me, so whenever I louder screw, whenever I am loud, it doesn't reverberate. So. And uh, I've got a hearty laugh, so cool. guffaw. Oh. All right. Well, everybody, please welcome to a comedy advice podcast. My name is Stefan Sitani, and I have a very special guest today. He's the winner of NBC's Last Comic Standing season seven as, and has released multiple specials on HBO and Netflix, including his latest special, Bad Decisions or Malas Decisiones. He's the first comedian to have a special in both English and Spanish, and he regularly shows on NBC's Super st Superstore, Superstore and the Eric Andre show. Everybody, please welcome Felipe Esparza. What's up, everybody? Oh, my gosh. It's so good to have you. Before we dive into you your life, your new specials. I just wanted to ask, I'd like to ask my guests first off, how are you doing? You okay? We're in some- I'm doing time. good, man. Good, good. What, what have you been doing to keep up and, and kind of pass the time? I know it's been really hard, especially for comedians with all the closing down of comedy clubs and everything like that. I know. How, I've actually how, been um, busy right after like, I guess from, um, from March to May, I didn't do anything, no stand-up, but I got to work on a movie. It was all COVID-19. We had doctors, we had people checking people's temperature. It's a movie called um, Seventh Union, Seventh and Union, with Omar nice. Chaparro starring, and um, I'm like a co-star. And we just, we shot that movie. And then um, I shot a Superstore episode last, last this week. Uh -huh. I haven't been back since season four. Yes. Damn, that's, that's awesome. Good. And um, I did a, my first voiceover. Wow. Yes, next year on Adult Swim. And luckily, I got to do a lot of stuff on in 2019 before the pandemic started. I got to do a whole season of Eric Andre, which is out right now every Sunday at midnight on Adult Swim. That's I did, awesome. And I, did and that I just had. I'm sorry, what was that? I did Hand and Fight on Netflix, and I was lucky enough to be one of the last comics to shoot a special before the pandemic. I shot mine in the beginning of January. Oh, okay. I was about to ask about that because I saw the special, which is hilarious, by the way. And I saw at the end you were taking pictures with fans and everything like that. So I was wondering if it was pre-COVID, post-COVID. Pre-COVID. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. And then I was going to ask too, I, obviously you've got a lot going on. You decided to do not just one special, but two specials and not just in one language, but two languages. So you've, you've got bad decisions in English, males decisiones in uh, Spanish. And so what was the driving force for you to say, you know what, I'm not just going to do one, but I'm going to do two and I'm going to do one in Spanish. I don't know. Um, I just want to do something different. I wanted to challenge myself, like my first special. I, had to, I only had like one week to prepare. And so I just got my old material and put it all together in two weeks. And the second special, my wife and I, we both produced it. Like we did it with our own money. Uh -huh. And this special, we got a deal with, H with um, Netflix. 
So we threw in, you know what, why don't we just do two specials, one in English and one in Spanish. And they asked me, do you speak Spanish? I said, good enough. <laughs> so, I, so at first, once I had like an hour in, of English, I started working on the Spanish. Uh -huh. I translated most of the material that I could into Spanish. I first did it the wrong way. I, I, I was like writing down my jokes and then going through Google Translate. And then a, lot of, a lot of the words were not translating well. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I went to Mexico, Tijuana, Mexico, and I met a comedian there named Joel Sotomayor. And okay. he pretty much went on the road with me and helped me translate the material that I could translate from English to Spanish. And I went to yeah. Tijuana once a month to do shows. Oh, my God. And what is it like doing comedy over in Tijuana? It's different because in America, like we do Spanish comedy in America, and you, you mess up the word and do it in English. They're very forgiving because they're like a, you know, they, they're Mexican-American crowd. They know English and they know Spanish. Right. So if you mess up a word, it's probably a word that they mess up too, so they'll laugh with you. Mm -hmm. But in Mexico, if you mess up a word and go to Spanish, you get silence. Like if you mess up yeah. a Spanish word and then try to go back to English, nah, man. The majority of the people there in uh, my Spanish show in Tijuana spoke mainly their first language was spanish and of course there were some people there at the show that were deported from the united states and they were living in mexico now and they went to my show of course they knew everything oh shit! that was surprising I because a lot of my audience when i started notice once like the word spread that i was coming to mexico to do shows yeah. a lot of people from san diego bakersfield we're actually taking a drive to Tijuana to, for the day to eat tacos, to buy piñatas, lucha más, and they will come to my show, and then after the show, go back to the United States. For real, man, I was crossing Damn. the board. Um, Joel from Mexico will pick me up in San Diego, uh -huh. and then I will go to Mexico, cross the border in Mexico, go eat, hang out, and then after the show, we'll go to a bakery, and then... Um, I'll walk into United States, like on foot, and um, walk through the <laughs> border. And then um, my friend will meet me at, with his car across the border. And yeah. then we'll just drive back to San Diego. <laughs> oh, no way. That's crazy, man. And I was, gonna, I was also going to ask, so did you just go down to Tijuana and you just did shows? Were there any open mic nights that you had to do? I don't even know if there are open mic nights in Tijuana or... Mexico or Tijuana has come. like a, an open mic scene and a, and, a, and, a, and a paid comedy scene. Okay. And the, the place that I go to, went to, it's like a paid comedy show. I don't know how much money they, they get paid in, in, um, in, 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 in pesos, but I know that the comments were getting 45 bucks. And that's a lot of money in Mexico because they average, what, the, the average pay is 150 <laughs> a week. So to make 45 yeah. bucks doing stand-up comedy to do 10 minutes for the comic was good. But um, yeah. what, what, I, I wasn't getting paid for these shows. I, I didn't um, get paid for none of the Spanish shows. I would just show up and then the money will go to the comics. Oh, that's, oh, that's nice. Nice. That's really yeah. cool. And I have to say, too, I was watching the Spanish version after I watched the English version. And I know you were saying you tried to get as much of this stuff that you could translate and then some of it didn't go in. I know with your English version, you started talking about, you started with the bit about your dog and getting older yeah. and going out to the club and you're like, oh man, I miss my dog. And I think in the Spanish version, you had started off with a guy was asking you <laughs> for something to eat or just something when you were yeah. walking into a store. And then you added some taglines in Spanish and stuff. So I thought that was really cool how you were able to, Yeah, it wasn't just a direct Google translate type thing. You actually put in these accents or special yeah. bits for each version. So you get a little unique taste with each one. You have to throw in your flavor. I remember when I was a young comic, I saw yeah. um, Ronnie Dangerfield come in before he died. Uh -huh. And he was just wearing a, a a beat up army jacket and sweats and a Hawaiian t-shirt and from Vans. And his 
his young 55 year old wife was there. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. She, he was like 75, I think, or so I don't know how old. But his wife oh, was like a, like a, she must have been like a model when she was 20. But she was oh. still holding it down at 55. And when he went up there, he took out a paper like this. Like a paper like that. Right. And he put on his glasses. Hey, hey, hey. And then he started reading <laughs> the jokes, but without the character. Oh, shit. And his wife was um on the back of the stage like this with a tape recorder, like a soldier. Oh, no way. <laughs> no way. I bet you he's met a lot of chicks in his 70s, but no one, no, no one said, I can hold a tape recorder while you do your set. <laughs> if he had an online dating profile, if he was still alive. Real thing. Like, that's uh, something he wouldn't, he wouldn't even have to write that, like, because uh, then everybody will say it. You know? Yeah, I mean? that's true. That's true. But she was holding it down like this, and, when she, and then he just said, all right. And when, she said, and she, when he said, all right, she stopped the tape. And put in her purse. Damn, dude. Damn. I was going to say, too, because I know that your wife and you, you just said it earlier, too. You guys have produced and, and made specials together. Yeah. How, how is she involved with, does she hold the tape recorder, too? It's almost like holding the purse on the guy's well, I side. I do it on my phone now. <laughs> I do it on my phone. Nice. Nice. Oh, that's awesome, man. Well, good. I know you've got a lot of projects going on, and then you also have been doing the What's Up, Fool? God, I podcast. Totally... Yes. This week, we have Eric Andre on the show. Oh, my gosh. I was listening to Eric Andre. I was listening. You also have, uh, you have a lot of cool people on there. You had Carmen Lynch, who is also a bilingual comedian that yeah. does comedy in Spanish and English. You also had Dogface, the guy that, with the cranberry juice that was singing yeah. to uh while he was skateboarding so it's a really cool podcast how how have you been able to keep it up since 2014 it's a long ass time we've been doing it on zoom lately and we started off in the studio but now we do it only on zoom right right yeah oh it's tough god well i've been lucky with uh in the beginning i was very lucky with the guests that i had because it was just people I would meet in the streets. Like one of my guests was named Frankie Carrillo, and now he's yeah. on Netflix. And that guy was like one of the guys that he he came out of prison after doing 18 years for a murder he didn't commit. And I was like, wow. But he told me when we first met that he voted for me. Well, he, he a lot of the prison inmates where he was at were watching Last Comic Standing, and they, they voted for me through their no cell way. Phone. Yeah. The silent minority people. I bet oh, the other four, the other four people that were in the show can't say that that they had inmates voting for them. God, yeah, seriously. Who yeah, add an yeah. asterisk. Add an asterisk to my special now. Oh my God, who says inmates can't vote? This is amazing. No, they oh, voted. <laughs> I, bet you in, I bet you inmates are voting for American Idol too. <laughs> Oh, hell yes. I'm sure. And fuck yeah. I bet they're the having in lunch a vote for um, number five here. <laughs> like Dancing with the Stars, that Tiger King chick, she's going for it. God. Jesus. You know what? As be, dog face is on everything, bro. I mean, he is hot right now, but I want to know how hot he's going to stay. But right now, they should grab him and put him on Dancing with the Stars. Oh my God, that's a good idea, dude. How, yeah, because yeah, he because he already could dance. Nice. His partner could be the cranberry juice, and then Hilarious. fuck it, Bro, that would be I, I awesome. I can picture them showing up in the intro with with their longboards. <laughs> that would be pretty good. I think we should pitch this idea. Oh, they uh, could oh, they could fuck they could fucking add dog face to the last um. Fast and the Furious movie, eh? Oh, my God. Vin Diesel replacement right there. They're doing, like, the last one now, number nine. Holy shit. The last... Who, is Vin Diesel still in it? Or did he... Yes. Okay. 
that's the last one. Imagine, bro, you made a whole life about being in the Fast and the Furious. It's not a bad thing to have on a resume. Shit, man. I would do it. I would do it. Oh, if yeah. I could either do, I don't know, that or Dancing on the, with the Stars, I would do 11 Fast and Furiouses. Yeah. Me, I would like to judge on the British Bake Off. Oh, my God. Are you into that? Oh, Paul Hollywood is my hero, man. I, I love that show. Is he the my, guy with the black hair or the bald guy? He's the, oh, um, he's the judge with the silver hair. Oh, yeah, I know but, that. Yeah, he's good. I like that old lady. Oh, Prue. Yes. I love how she almost, I think they call it a prugasm when she eats yeah. something that's so good. She's like, oh, that's delicious. That's absolutely scrumptious. There's another old lady that gives you like side um, compliments, you know, like, double hand compliment like she goes it's just your recipe she goes and that lady goes no that's just my old granny's recipe oh so if you don't win we have to blame your granny for this bake huh <laughs> uh and then the the paul hollywood guy he's a stern judge he looks at the oh, contestants yeah. with those piercing blue eyes and he's like a bit boring and you're like, shit, it's just these soft words that mean so much. And I don't know if I could handle that, dude. It tastes but. very good, but it's overcooked, over good, overcooked for being a crisp, very crust. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I, I don't know if this hit the brief for being a tart because the, the filling is <laughs> yeah, quite- that one. That's a good one. I remember that one. Very tart for a tart. <laughs> Dude. I like that one, and I started watching um, Norsemen on Netflix. Oh, is that the comedy one about Norse times? Yeah. yeah we, about... Dude, oh. it's funny, man, because um, one of the, when they're about to do another pillage, one of the guys grabs the, a, a helmet, and he pulls two horns, and they look at him like, that's weird, you know? <laughs> Like, nobody has done that before, right? But he tells them, but no, but see, when you put this on, it shows individualism, you know, and they see the horrors, you know, and it means you're going to be in charge for the raid. And the other guy goes, um, I don't know, I think you look quite dumb, you know, wearing that. And, and then they would look at each other. He goes, he goes, that'll never catch on. <laughs> <Shit>. and um, <coughs> they show like a like the norsemen are pretty much vikings right they're like the um i guess they were as far as tribes they would be the vanguards probably the vanguards i don't know but um these vikings all they know is raids pillaging and raping and that's it you know and, and farming on the side and that's right they don't know shit about what we know now, you know, about like, they don't know nothing about two plus two equals four or, or, um, or putting a joke together, you know, or, or any, any type of artistic thing. They don't know how to paint. They don't know how to, you know, come up with an idea. They don't have stories, you know, they don't know how to, any, no, there's no one making shit up. So they, they go to Rome, I guess, and they fucking kidnap a slave. And that slave is like a, he, they, he's like an actor, bro. An actor. Like he was about to start a show somewhere and they kidnapped him. So he gets kidnapped by this other tribe and this fool starts, wait, wait, don't kill me. Let me show you something. And he does this whole pantomime show like this. And then those, they can't even take it, bro. They never seen a performance anywhere, you know? All these people have seen is violence through their whole lives, you know? violence yeah. they're watching like an artistic something right and the guy goes i don't know what's going on but there's a feeling inside and i'm getting a little teary-eyed <laughs> and it's uh, funny dude because he tells those those uh, vikings to make him an amphitheater for his show yeah. and he draws out the plans and they draw it exactly the way he drew it on a on a paper this small 
Oh my God, that's hilarious. I think it's funny too because on the first episode, it shows that the prisoners also don't quite understand what the Vikings are all about either. And so there's yeah. one prisoner and he's like, Oh, uh, to the guard, I had lent you my jacket. I was wondering if I could have that back now. And yeah. the guy's like, uh, I don't think so. It puts his finger up his ass and makes him eat it. That's right. Oh, that's right. Oh, God. In, 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 um, in season two, they show how they got that guy from Rome. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I they, just show, got... um, they show how they show when that guy got married to that woman. Uh huh. It's oh, funny because okay. when she joined the Vikings, she goes, How is a woman going to pillage? Ha 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 ha. <laughs> and she fucking punches some dude and picks up her skirt and jumps on top of him and just rides his face till he she has an orgasm and dies and she dies she oh, she suffocates shit. him holy shit oh and they my show God. her doing that that's why she comes back with that necklace full of penises oh shit okay 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 spoiler alert <laughs> you know what? i'll take that clip and i'll put it right before everything that we said <laughs> awesome well felipe we're about to get into the self-help or advice portion of the podcast now i like to before we answer questions and get inspired with a nice inspirational quote before i present mine i like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help get them through their dark days or lift them up get them pumped. no no inspirational quotes. Okay. All right. So we're going to have a pass. All right. We'll go to my inspirational quote. This one, it's actually not by a person. It's by a robot. And it's called Inspirobot. So what it does is it's a robot that uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man yeah. and mash them together for a really interesting quote. So um, I'll read this one, and then we can see if it makes any sense to you, Felipe. This week's quote from InspireBot says, just because you're a butcher, it doesn't mean you should act like a weirdo. Hmm. Inspiring. I, I think maybe, Felipe, this might be saying, don't let your career reflect who you are as a person. Totally, 100%. Yeah, don't show up to the party with a bloody t-shirt in. <laughs> Yeah, nobody wants nobody wants to hear about nobody wants to talk about knives all day. Work life balance. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, be a butcher, but they draw on the side they like come come with a different conversation. Like, yeah, I, I'm a butcher, but I also like drawing perspective. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I like to cut into interesting subjects like Norseman or Britain's greatest bake off, not just meat. So there we go. Beautiful. All right, good. That was great. Now that we're inspired, I've got two questions here. This Actually, first my one. dad told me once when I, oh. when I was a knucklehead, he said you should find a job where at the, end of the, at the end of the eight hours when you come home, you look at your hands and you really don't have to wash them to eat. Mm. But, you know, as a, as a comedian, man, you got to wash your hands after that microphone. But you really don't got to wash your hands because they're not that dirty. <laughs> oh, shit. we show up to work with our hands clean and get um nut chicken nuggets oh my i you know what being a digital marketer i my hands are pristine they're very clean immaculate and then just yesterday i had gotten into a tea bag or something and i saw a little dirt under my nails and i thought oh my god i'm gonna have to scrub and scrub to get this out and then i realized what a princess that i've become so um I, I've got it lucky, to say the least. Comedians as well. Although, with COVID, I think everyone has to wash their hands, don't they? Yeah. But it's good. All right. Well, this first question, it comes from our fan, Joel. Thank you, Joel. It says, my stepdaughter blocked me on all socials. What should I say or not say to her at Christmas? I've been in my stepdaughter's life since she was nine. She's now 20. We've always had pretty good relationship, but not super close. I just found out she blocked me from all her socials about two weeks ago. I tried to text her to ask her why, but I'm also blocked on her phone too. We're supposed to get together for Christmas. Should I say anything? What should I do? 
I would start adding all her friends one by one and start telling her all her friends that you're gonna have a surprise party for her in December. And then when she shows up, go psych. <laughs> oh shit. That's pretty good. Okay. I like that. I like that. Do you um do you think that she should say anything? I, I do don't think that... to, do they live together? It no, it doesn't look like it. They don't live together. Maybe he did somebody something to her when she was little and it's on now. Oh. So maybe just res Maybe she screamed at her and, and they finally she's finally catch went to, she probably went to rehab now and realized her dad is a problem to all her lives. Oh shit. The real toxicity is the parent the step parent here. So yeah. block. Do you really want to I mean, what importance is it to see your stepdaughter on social media? Is it going to give you that much joy to see what she's up to? Instead, you could just talk to that person, maybe? I guess. I think if they, if they live far away, maybe like really far away, they can have oh. a relationship like that. But if they, live, if they live in the same house, the same town, hey, enough, enough, hey, let her live her, let her, live her life. That's right. Yeah. Let if you love something, let it block you on social media. And if it loves you back, it will unblock you, I think is the same. That, that reminds me of a joke I used to say. I said that uh, I met my daughter on Facebook. She left me a comment. Daddy, when you get to child support, I had to block her. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's better that they stay blocked. That's right. Also, you know, if you're like a stepfather, why, you want your why would you want your kids on your social media? So they could, so they could look at your TikTok video and look how stupid it is. And you know, you know, one thing is to hear hate from everybody else, but to have one of your family member, like your daughter, go, "Dad, it's stupid," with a, like seventy views, you know? Oh stupid. shit! Yeah, yeah. You don't want that. Do, do do your kids? Do they comment on your stuff on social media? No, but sometimes I want to block on them and say, "Really? She's lying. He's lying." You don't got it going on. He came over here to buy 60 bucks last week. <laughs> Shit. All right. We've got our last question. This one is from Sandy. She found it on Reddit. It says, feels bad to end calls. I'm a shy person who is also extremely awkward in social situations. I really don't know how to keep a conversation going. So when someone calls me and talks for quite a while, I start to stress myself out about how to leave the call. Sometimes I stay on the call for hours. What do I do? To hang up? Just don't even say anything? I, 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 it sounds more like she's not in the conversation. I think she's more like of a listener. So if you're a listener, man, you could just start talking and the other person will hang up on your story. So. Oh, that's, that's a good way to express yourself. Yeah, too. If, she, if that woman is shy... She's a big listener, so someone who's very toxic and likes to talk a lot has a lot of stuff to um, unleash on people. And most of the time, when people are venting, this goes for a lot of things. They're not re they're not looking for advice; they just want to say it out loud, you know. Like if a, a close friend of yours tells you something that's deep secret or a, a problem he has with his wife, and he's right. telling you his confessions about how he feels with his wife. He just wants to, you to listen to him say it. He don't want your advice on none of that shit. Because a lot of people make the mistake, well, well you should kill that bitch, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, you know, forget her. And they don't want to hear none of that, you know? Because they already, they're not even thinking about none of the stuff that you have, you know? Yeah. And it's bad advice to come from a, from a person, the second person, because you don't live with his wife, you know, you don't know the relationship, you don't know how, how, you know, how many times they fought before, how many times they made up. He's just tired of it, and he, he you're his friend, and he wants to just talk about it. That's you right. Know? It's but it's this like woman right here should just say, should just say, um, should just stop the relationship. This is what I would do. It's kind of rude, but I would do this. I will start coughing and then I say, 
and, and then start talking about what happened to you. And then she'll tell you, that cough is all right. Oh, man, it's a little cold. But let me tell you what happened last week. Oh, that's, oh, that's a nice transition. Damn. <laughs> you be oh, rude, just say, yeah, 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 I got to go. There you go. I, I was thinking one more alternative is you could multitask since they're doing all the talking anyway. Blah, blah, blah. Paul Hollywood said my tart wasn't really a tart and I made a lot of tarts before I practiced on tarts. I thought I hit the brief, but the brief didn't really get hit according to their guidelines because there just wasn't enough cream around the tart. It was too tangy, etc. You could be out doing your taxes or going to the supermarket, doing whatever. So you still appear like you're a good friend but then you don't, you don't really have to listen. And they're not going to understand. They don't really know what they're saying anyway. So once they say it, they just feel better. Like you said, Felipe, yeah. they're, they're like, oh, I feel better now. I vented. And you're like, yeah. oh, I'm glad I did everything I needed to do today. So win-win. Oh, I'm glad you, I'm, I'm glad you were venting me because I was like, look, I was going to look for a shovel, dynamite. <laughs> I was going to steal a car to put the body inside. <laughs> yeah, I was getting ready here for a crime scene. Oh, well. I think the only time you would have to come in in a conversation with somebody inventing it was if somebody is getting violent, like, oh, I feel like leaving my wife or I feel like doing some harm. That's when you should come in. Hey, you crazy motherfucker. What are you talking about? But you can't throw in a crazy motherfucker if the person not talking about doing anything violent because they're just talking you look like the crazy one that, that's right there are certain levels of interruption so when somebody is venting a somebody about somebody and then you and then um you say something crazy about the other person you say it and then later on when you see them all in love you're gonna be the asshole that's right because they're venting about the person they care about they did one bad thing then they come back with that person and they're like oh do you know what stefan said here yes he said they were eight out of ten times that dude will go tell her you know you know it's funny babe i was i was so pissed off that i'm gonna go talk to jeff and he said i should kill your ass <laughs> <laughs> and now she hates you yeah then you're fucked so just stay out of it if you want to cough and talk about your shit you can, you, the crazy motherfucker, you can insert that if they start getting into violence or things like that, then you gotta, hey, 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 hey. But, yeah, man, like, like AC Collins should have told a OJ Simpson, yeah, man, I feel like killing a bitch, hey, OJ. That's right, that was, that was the appropriate response. Instead, they may have gone for a cough and then talked about their day. Yeah, he probably but, said, let's go rent a van. Yeah. It, <laughs> I got two knives. <laughs> if only they had listened to this episode beforehand. Beforehand, you know. AC would have just said, OJ, you need to calm the fuck down. Fuck. It's like when um, you ever watch those videos of Mike Tyson, the old videos, you know, of Mike Tyson, you know, old Mike Tyson, 20-year-old Mike Tyson, yeah, not 50-year-old yeah. Mike Tyson, which is an angel, a saint, <laughs> you know, but the, the old Mike Tyson, you know, when he was like doing his little barge against the other fighter, you know, to to sell tickets, but he yeah. would, Mike Tyson would take it out of hand, like, "Oh, I'm gonna eat your children, and I'm gonna knock your ass out." And then all his friends were right here, like there was like 20 friends, and you, you could see like the friends leaving little by little. Mike Tyson, you know, "Oh, I'm gonna beat your ass, and oh, I'm gonna wow. make you my bitch." Um, I'm gonna eat your children, and you can talk people leaving and shit. And then oh, I'm gonna bite, eat your dick. I'm gonna eat you. And then when they got to like, when they got to that point, you know, there were no friends left. You know, that's when you gotta come in and say, hey, hey, hey. Tyson is gonna good fight, good fight. You know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when that when the dick munching and dick eating starts to be mentioned, that's when you gotta. Because right, only a true homie will back that up, you know? A true yeah, homie yeah. Will you get the it. dick, I got the balls, bro. Come on, let's go at him. Like, that's what a you true get, friend. Like, if, like if you're going to talk shit, mad shit like that, you got to have a hype man next to you. We're going to, I'm going to buy this dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to put ketchup on that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I got the buns from Walmart, bitch. Let's go. 
And yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm gonna eat your children. Yeah, and then we're going to Sizzler to celebrate. <laughs> We're going to invite the family over. We're all going to have a piece. We're going to get eat the you can eat shrimp and only get one order of shrimp, and we're all going to share the plate. <laughs> we're going to use your credit card, because fuck you. Oh, God. Because I need the miles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, Felipe, this has been extraordinary, sensational. Oh, thank you thank for having me, bro. Shit. Absolutely, man. This tape or audio? This will be both. It'll be both. Oh, cool. The full and then, haircut. Oh, it looks good, man. Thanks, man. I got my little nice. Keanu Reeves going here. Hell yeah. Yeah, I couldn't tell the difference. I was gonna say we're gonna record the the Spanish version of the episode now. So if you want right. to just keep the hat off to keep it different. No, I'm kidding. But okay. I did want to ask, what what have you got going on? Where can okay. people find you? What have you got to plug? I um I have um the Eric Andre show that's on every mid at midnight. On Sundays, on Adult Swim at midnight, I have a movie with Polly Shore called The Guest House. And oh yeah, this is big. Um, Steve Byrne uh, wrote a movie and directed it based on his first time opening up for a big comic. It's called The Opener, start, starting uh, Jimmy O. Yang from um, yes. Silicon Valley and Cedric the Entertainer, Neil Brennan, Russell Peters, Whitney Cummings, Tom Segura. A lot of comedians are in it, and I, I, I'm in it too. I play a cab driver. Oh, spoiler nice. alert! Spoiler <laughs> alert! If you want to go see it right now, I have a small part. But if you're a comedian, you're gonna love this movie because there's a lot of comedian inside jokes. And let me tell you, man, these are our holy grail if you're a comic, you know. Oh, right? your notebook. Nice. And um, there's a scene in in a movie where I I come back and because he forgot it. And, uh, this is something that never happened, by the way. I, I I'm a cab driver re returns his cell phone and his his jokes to him. Damn. So I would tell people, who do you play in a movie? The comedy angel. Why? Because I brought back a comedian's comedy notebooks and his phone. That never happens in real life, bro. You fucking, you lose this, it's over. Dude, in reality, the cab driver would have become the famous comedian. That would have been the time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, shit. These jokes um, don't even make sense, eh? <laughs> <laughs> this guy's writing about eating children and shit? Going to Sizzler for shrimp? What the fuck? Yeah. God. Well, this is Felipe, the worst. This is the worst menu ever. <laughs> this is the worst grocery list ever. <laughs> Killer material my ass now. Dude, <laughs> when you heard something funny, I was yeah. talking to this, this female comedian one time. I won't say her name. But um, she was telling me, what was the, what was the worst thing that happened to you as a, as a comedian? Yeah. She said, I was on stage, and this older comic picked up my comedy notebook. I started writing on it while I was on stage. Like, like he found my set list and he started tagging up every joke that I did on my notebook as he was watching my set. And then I what? said, I told her, I don't give a fuck if you and I become enemies in the future. This, this is the only thing that will get us back together is to kick that fucker's ass and then we could not be friends ever again. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, I'm, like, I get to chill thinking about it because what, nobody does shit like that. And I don't know how that guy lived. Oh, my God, dude. That's hard. That's, that's no, right? That's, that's a big no-no. That's a... Fuck, yeah. Even when, like, when I'm in a, at a green room and somebody forgot their notebook, I open it up one time and I see the name and I tell the comedy client, I think um, Jerry Miller left his notebook here. And the and then the the, the man goes, oh, fuck that guy, he's just opener, <laughs> you know. But but still, I I wouldn't even open it. I just leave it there. Whenever the fuck he comes back, there it is. But to oh. to to do that shit, that takes a lot of balls, bro. Yo, seriously. <laughs> oh my god. You do like not that... mow. You do not mow another man. No, no, no. you do not <laughs> mow another man lawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, that's the inspirational quote right there. I like that. You do not that's mow beautiful. another man's lawn and don't write another person's joke book. That's right. Stay Crazy in your book. own joke book okay. and lawn. God, dude. Wow. Felipe, oh, it's... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm going to be in Arlington at the Arlington Improv next week. Not this... Well, I guess... I don't know if this airs this week or next week, but I'll be at the Arlington Improv. Check it out. Oh, okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. I'll, uh, this is going to go live. Felipe. Take go us ahead. at Felipe's World. Go for it. Nice. And I also saw you're going to be, is that in Texas? I saw you're going to do an outdoor Texas show. Yeah, I'm doing an outdoor event at the Selena Auditorium um, Winter Garden outside. And um, it's going to be a parking lot event. Outside event, they're going to have people sitting in quad pods of four. And tickets oh. are on sale that, on, for that right now. They're almost sold out. Oh, nice. Nice. And at Cedar Park, too, in, in Austin. Oh, cool. Okay. Nice. I'll have cool. links to everything that you mentioned in the show notes so people can just click on over and get to it. Thanks, man. Cool, man. Good. All right. Well, Felipe, it's been an absolute pleasure. I hope to see you sometime if you ever perform in Phoenix. I'd love to come I see you. Wait. I'm not, I was supposed to be there at the Laugh Out Loud Stand Up Comedy Club for New Year's Eve. But oh, okay. there's no comedy clubs opening in Phoenix, right? They've started to open up again. Yeah. And laugh out loud to it. Laugh out loud. They have Tempe Improv, the stand up live, uh, stand up live, stand up live is open? Yeah. What's the capacity of stand up live? I think they're doing sixty percent capacity. Cool. All right. Thanks, man. Uh, good to know. Yeah. I and I think. Uh, there might be some openings actually because they've they had some comics coming in from new york that have had to cancel because uh governor cuomo he said az is a uh quarantine spot oh. so you gotta you gotta like stay two weeks or quarantine after you go oh, there oh wow good to know thank you man yeah 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 absolutely absolutely I'll see you there, fool. nice nice all right later, well man. thank you so much dude i'll thank see you, you later man. oh yeah right. thank you very much Thank you. Bye-bye.